pick them up. I don't know what they put out there. Free from fear, power encounter, idiots go to hell. I don't know what's out there. And I know every time I mention that title, everybody laughs, but I got five hours of messages in that book, and I'll just tell you right to your face, if you go to hell, you're an idiot. Hey, Brother Tharp, just, just saw you there. I'm serious. I'm, sit down for a second. You, you took an hour. I'm going to take five minutes. And the reason why they put that book is because I preached a sermon to our church one Sunday morning on only idiots go to hell. And when I read it, everybody laughed just like you laugh. But when I brought the stories to them, they weren't laughing anymore. Because there was two stories in the paper. One was about a New York fire. And the fireman went up on the ladder, hook and ladder, to get this lady and her baby out of the second or third story window. And when the fireman got up there, the lady started debating with him saying that she didn't need him to save her, that she could take care of getting out of the house just fine. And while she argued from her position of stupidity, the building collapsed. And her and the baby were killed. And so I looked at that and I said, I wonder who the idiot is in this picture. Somebody offered you salvation and deliverance, but you're a smart aleck. And so you end up dying in the fire. Then they had another one in the Florida paper where a lady got caught in the undertow in the Gulf Stream, and I've been there years ago when I was a boy, and it can just suck you down and sweep you way out there. And they had a, one of those uh, copper-toned Christians going on on his uh, surfboard and, and got the lifeguard out there and uh, tried to save her. Would you believe this dumb damsel in distress wanted to know if he had a different color lifesaver? You got a life preserver other than white. Now she's in an undertow, she's swallowing salt water, and she's debating this guy and saying, I know how to swim, I don't need you lifeguard macho guys to come out here and try to save me. And while she argues with him, the undertow goes, and she ends up on a beach about three miles down there with half the ocean in her stomach, dead as a hammer. So I said, I wonder who the idiot is in this picture. So now I get to my book. Here we are, born in sin and shaping in iniquity. We're lost. We have the nature of a rebel, Satan himself, who hates God. We have no way to approach God because we're unholy and he's holy. We can't bust into his house and say, hey, I want to talk to you, boy. That don't work except for the idiots on TV. It really don't work. And uh, But God so loves us. He says, you know, I don't want you to be lost. So... He makes himself a body and, and comes out of a lady and he incarnates himself and he walks among us. And he shows us the kingdom of God in practice and then he, he gets beat half to death and they hang him half naked up on a tree. And he dies for our sin. They throw him in a hole. He stays there three days. He gets back up. He gets on an elevator, goes back to the glory world, sends back the Holy Ghost to live inside of us and says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. And then after a while, I'm going to come back and take you to my house. And you can eat all my groceries for free. And you can live forever. And I'll make sure you won't ever get sick again. I'll give you a brand new body. And somebody is dumb enough to say, you know, I'm just not religious. I I'm not into that church junk. Well, you that ain't into the church junk, you'll be into the hell junk after a while. Let me try it again. If you get to go to hell, you got to be an idiot. Because Jesus loves you. And the power of God is available. And the blood of the Lamb works. And the Holy Ghost is here. And angels are on your side. Give me just, give me just two more minutes. I'm old. And so time's very, very valuable to me. I got no place to go but to heaven. Those of you that are going to hell, you can afford to be late. I was getting a kick out of ninko poops that come by our church. They don't have clean underwear, they don't have clean socks, they don't have they don't have a job, they don't have a car, and yet they want to know if I can give them ten dollars. And I said, well, okay, here's a broom. Just sweep the parking lot. And the guy lasts about 12 minutes and says, hey, listen, I got to go. And I'm going, you got to go. 
You ain't got clean underwear, clean socks, clean clothes. You ain't got the brains. God gave a goose. You couldn't pay your way out of debt. Now, where exactly are you needed? Well, the only thing worse than that is to pastor a church or preach for a church that comes to the service with leaving on their mind. You better stop treating church like it's a, Venice, a visit to the dentist office. Your life can change in the next few minutes. 